31, let's try and unpack the definitions of increasing, decreasing, and constant functions. And this giant box might look a little overwhelming. It's got a lot of notation on it, so that's fine. We're going to read off the notation, then I'm going to refer to these three little graphs to help us unpack this. So here we go. Suppose that a function f is defined over an interval i, and x sub 1 and x sub 2 are in this interval. We will say that f increases on this interval if, whenever x sub 1 is less than x sub 2, we know that f of x sub 1 is less than f of x sub 2. We're going to say it decreases on this interval whenever x sub 1 being less than x sub 2 lets you know that f of x sub 1 is greater than f of x sub 2, and it's constant wherever we have x sub 1 and x sub 2 with their function values being equal. All right, so again, that might not make a whole lot of sense, but let's really start to unpack it. And I want to focus in just right here on this first expression. What does it mean for x sub 1 to be less than x sub 2? Well, it just means that if you're looking at the x-axis, right, and I'm not going to look at the x's and y's, just the x-axis, that you hit x sub 1 before you hit x sub 2, right? Maybe this is the number, I don't know, 4 on the x-axis, and this was 6, right? So maybe I had like 4, 5, 6. So all this is saying is that x sub 1 is less than x sub 2. Or you could say x sub 1 is to the left of x sub 2, right? Because when we talk about intervals, we always go low to high. So this is lower, this is higher. That's all that's referring to. So if you look at this graph here, you'll see that x sub 1 is a smaller number than x sub 2 on the x-axis. As I move left to right, I hit x sub 1 first, then x sub 2. And if you look at my y values here, you'll see f of x sub 1 is a lower y value than f of x sub 2. And that's what this is referring to. This winds up being a smaller number than this number, and that just means your function's increasing. So as I move left to right, so that's what this is saying. As I move left to right, my function went down to up. So you see, I'm increasing. As I move left to right, you see my function getting higher. And we will say that f is increasing. So that's what it's referring to. Now, on the flip of that, let's say x sub 1 was less than x sub 2, right? I'm moving left to right. I think you'll see here that my function values are getting smaller, right? I'm going from up to down. Or f of x sub 1 was greater than f of x sub 2, right? Because I decreased. And then I'm constant when I have x sub 1 and x sub 2 where their function values are equal. So that's what this is referring to. As I move left to right, I move down to up. As I move left to right, I move up to down. As I move left to right, they're equal. All right, increasing, decreasing, constant. All right, so with that, I'm going to scooch the page up. And let's see if we can figure out what intervals or on which intervals my function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so let me scoot that up. There we go. Okay. So as we start to look at this, it says the figure below shows the graph of a function. This might seem familiar. We looked at this graph in section 3.2, I believe, when we were doing piecewise functions and looking at domains and ranges. Right? This function had a domain of all real numbers and a range of negative 2 to infinity. All right, determine the intervals over which the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. And this is always when we're moving left to right. So just trace this out as your function moves left to right. So I start at the very leftmost point and I move right. You can see I'm on the first line, then I jump pieces to this next line, then I jump pieces to this third line. And on each of those lines, I'm doing something different. So we want to determine, am I increasing, decreasing, or constant? And before we really break into this, there's a couple of things I want you to keep in mind. When you determine the intervals for increasing, decreasing, or constant, you only refer to x values. All right, we're asking which values in our domain, for which x values in our domain is our function increasing, decreasing, or constant. All right, so we're only going to refer to x values. We're going to write some intervals, right? So you know you're going to go low, comma, high. And when you're writing these intervals, the other thing I want you to do is always use parentheses. All right, some books will have you use brackets on increasing, decreasing, and constant intervals. I, I just fundamentally disagree with that. 
If you ever want to duke it out and talk about why I feel like that, that's great. I'm happy. Standing invite. Come on by or chat with me online. Uh, but, but for this class, we will always use parentheses when we're talking about increasing, decreasing, or constant intervals. So let's see if we can get the increasing. So where was my function increasing? Well, I hope you can see from here, right? I'm heading down. So this was my decreasing interval. Here, I was staying put, right? I was staying at this y value of two the entire time. So this, let me draw an arrow here, is my constant interval. All right, and here you can feel that as I move left to right, my function, my y values are headed up. So this part of the graph was increasing. Okay, so when it asks me, where was I increasing? I'm only gonna worry about the x value. So if I look at that x value, right, it looks like my ordered pair starts here at x being two. So my low is gonna be two. My high, you can see it heads this way forever. So I'm gonna go to infinity. Even when we were talking about domains and ranges, we would always put in, uh, parentheses around the infinities. And you're, you're not gonna put a bracket around the two because at x equals two, you're neither increasing, decreasing, or constant. You're just, that's the start of that piece of the function. All right, so with that, we have our increasing interval. All right, for decreasing, it was here. Now, again, this is left forever. So I'm gonna start this at a low of negative infinity. And then I only care about the x-coordinate. I was decreasing until my x-coordinate of negative two. Okay. And then I was constant from this part of my graph to this part of my graph. And again, if you look at the x-coordinates, oops, I just shifted this a bit. All right, if you look at the x-coordinates here, it's negative two to positive two. So I was constant between negative two and positive two. And that's, that's increasing, decreasing. So you look on your graph, where was I decreasing, increasing, or constant? Make sure you're only referring to x coordinates. We only care about the x values for which you're increasing, decreasing, or constant. And then always use some parentheses. And once we get moving in math, or really once you get moving in math, you're gonna, you're gonna pick up different techniques for how to determine where is the cutoff, right? I gave you graphs where it was easy enough to see it was at negative two and two. What if it's not so easy to see? For this class, we'll use our calculator to help us figure that out. And in calculus, you'll use some calculus to help you figure that out. All right, so with that, we're gonna extend beyond this and start looking for relative extrema. I'll see you in a few, gang. Bye.